Hey YouTube, just want to do a uh, kind of kind of like a review video on um, uh, an instant hot water tank for or water heater rather for um, a camper. Uh, if you watched our last video, uh, just kind of explain the life of living in a camper. There are four of us, my family, living in a camper. You can see over my shoulder there. That's the edge of the barn. Um, we live behind a barn in a fifth wheel. Um, but the reason really for this video is not to tell you where we live because I kind of covered that in the last video. Um, it is really to explain, you know, the pros and the cons of this hot water heater, the water heater that we have, uh, we bought. Uh, we bought the one, it's from Gerard. It's a Gerard products. Um, came, you know, well recommended, I guess, off the internet. Uh, but this is a GSWH-2 tankless instant hot water um, heater. So um, this this thing, I mean, the, the instructions here, I mean, the, the book for the instructions is, it seems like it's going to be a lot, um, but it's not. I'm not a plumber. I'm not, um, you know, I, I do know my way around plumbing per se, but I'm not a plumber. Uh, but I do know that uh, this thing was easy to install. I've never installed one in a house. I've never tried to do that. Uh, but this was relatively easy. Uh, problem that I had on our particular deal was that um, our uh, 12 volt, so the one that we took out, um, when we took it out, it had 12 volt and uh, 110 or 120 to it. Um, and so when I went to put the instant one in the 12 volt power just wasn't there. So I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, we had trouble lights. I was trying to trace that wire back. Um, and right before I made this video, I got down and the 12 volt was working. So, uh, one of the problems that we had is that the 12 volt wasn't working. So what I had to do is I had to go, uh, right above our, our water heater is the refrigerator. So I tapped off of that. Um, and that has a constant 12 volt to power the refrigerator. Um, so I tapped off of that, making sure that the, the feed for the water heater wasn't going to overdo the, you know, I called, actually, I actually called, we live in a, in a Gulfstream Canyon trail. Um, and so I actually called the manufacturer and said, Hey, can you give me a wiring schematics of this so I can know what I'm doing? And the guy was like, we don't have those. And I'm like, okay, well, here's what I want to do. And he said, I think that should work. So that's what I did. I tapped off the 12 volt from the refrigerator and then I was able to run it parallel to the gas line, which runs straight down to feed the water heater. And then I just ran a very well shielded 12 volt wire over to my water heater, powered it up and boom, 12 volts um, right to it. Does not take 110. I keep looking over there cause it's literally right at my feet over here to my left. Um, but some things that I was thinking as, as you're going to watch this video, I'm going to give you some pros and some cons about this, uh, this water heater, but some things that I was thinking, um, that you should know is I've, I've heard a lot of people were like, you don't want to get one because it, you know, the water that you'll use in your bathroom, the pressure, it won't be enough to flow through there to turn on the water heater. So that's not really ideal and it won't work well. And so I was, I was kind of like, you know, afraid to get it, afraid to put it in. But when we got it, we didn't have any of those problems. Um, so I'm going to start with the cons and then I'll go to the pros. Um, I was asking my two boys and my wife, like, what are some, what are some cons about this thing? Like, what don't you like? And the only thing that we could think, um, the, the couple things that we could think of that we didn't like about it. Number one, it does make a little bit of noise. And now when I say noise, I will try to make a video, put it in here somewhere now, um, of the fan running. So when it kicks on, the fan has to run to blow, I guess, the heat or the propane that's exchanged around so it doesn't, you know, stink up the camper or something. Um, so it does make a little bit of noise. But when it comes right down to it, the first con or the first pro that I have is like constant hot water. So if you've traveled in a camper or you've lived in one like we're living in one, you know the value of having a hot shower. Uh, I work on a farm. Hot shower is, is something that I look forward to when I get home, uh, come in. And, um, you know, I don't want to have to worry about, you know, doing dishes and using all the hot water and somebody getting in 
the shower and not having hot water. So I take that as kind of like a trade-off, like, okay, that does make a little bit of a hum fan noise. If you're wanting the camper to be completely quiet, then this is going to be the biggest con for you, but it does make a little bit of noise. And again, I'll try to put a video in right now. So yeah, the fan noise, not that bad. Um, the second con about this particular, I guess this particular model, maybe it's everyone, I don't know. Uh, but you had to actually buy the door separately. So when, when you install the water heater in the side of your camper or wherever it goes, you had to buy the door separately. Um, I'm not for sure why they would do that other than just the openings are different, but this particular model, when I cross-referenced the one that we had, which is which was a Suburban, um, it was like, this will fit. And so I'm thinking, well, if it fits, then why do I have to get a different, you know, why do I have to buy a door? Anyway, that was the other con. You have to buy a door separately. My wife and I, when we did this, uh, when we bought this, it went on sale. And I think we were able to get it for around $500. Um, and you might be thinking, well, that's a lot of money. Well... A hot shower is over the course of time is worth it. So those are the maybe the two or three cons is just the high price of them. Um, but here's the pros. This might help you. Number one, constant hot water. I mean, good grief, you can't have enough of that. Um, constant hot water. I will say that that there is a minimum on the the water for our sink. If you turn it on just a little bit, you crack it open, it's not gonna be enough flow through the water heater to turn it on and make it heat that water. So there is that, maybe that's a con, is like you have to have it open, you know, your your sink open, your valves open enough to be able to flow that water through there to heat it up. But you get hot water all day long. No second guessing about it. So that's pro number one, constant hot water. It does what it says. This thing works great. It's awesome. Um, the other pro about this is it only uses 12 volt. So if we happen to be, you know, traveling and boondocking or something like that, and our batteries are good and charged, or we happen to stop overnight uh, at a truck stop or Walmart or whatever parking lot, and our batteries are good, we don't need to run, you know, an extension cord to uh, to shore power. We're good. So only runs off 12 volt, um, and so that to me was was another was another pro. Um, let's see. Oh, the other, another pro is the digital readout. So, um, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to take you over. I'm going to show you how this, how this works. So just bear with me. We're going to go check this out. All right. So there we got it. Um, refrigerator here. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, right underneath of our refrigerator. Uh, so please just understand that when I hook this up, I did not want to, because I appreciate what they did from the manufacturer, they had all their PEX fittings and, and all that with shutoffs. So in our camper, I don't know how it is for you, this, the water heater is the only, only thing in the whole camper, no toilets, no sinks that have its own shutoff. And so I could have, you know, just, I've worked with PEX before, I've replumbed stuff, I could have just cut down there and then ran new lines up and been done with it. But I was like, I don't want to have to go out and buy all those fittings, all those connections. When I know they work, I know they don't leak. So I went ahead and just put some brass fittings in with, with uh, some flexible line. But let's get over to the digital readout. There it is. I've mounted it here. You can mount it in different places. Um, but the cool thing about this thing is you can basically take it and and turn it on like so i've got it set to to 124 i believe that's as high as it will go so you can turn this up or down to your desired temperature um for me i kind of like it hot so i can mix in some cold water you can also take it and change it from fahrenheit to uh to celsius i believe you can turn it off here um and there is also on the front side outside when you take the thing off there's another switch out there that you can turn it off uh, but again, it is pretty, like, pretty awesome. The wiring, as you can see on the on the front there, I'm trying to get you in there, it's pretty self-explanatory. It tells you where things go. Um, 
one thing I did when I when I did wire it because I I like to be able to get to things. I put these connectors on so that if I ever did have to service it, it's not technically hardwired. You can get these at any AutoZone or whatever, but these just unplug. So this is my 12 volt that I ran that I told you, the thicker shielded wire that I ran from the refrigerator. Um, and I just, I ran it, put these stubs on there. So everything basically you can take out very, very quickly. Um, again, flex pipe, you can get that from Lowe's. That's no big deal. Uh, the brass fittings there, a piece of cake to put those in. But the digital readout was probably one of the coolest things that I was like, yeah, I can, I can work with that. Um, and when you turn water on, let's get up. I'll turn the sink on. We're going to go over, turn the hot on. It senses it. It knows that it's on. You can hear it a little bit, maybe. But it will tell you what the temperature is coming out. And as that water is rolling, I've got it full blast. So it's trying to pump a lot of water through. But if I choke this down, which I'll get up here and do. And 92 degrees is good for doing dishes. So here we go. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit. And now we get down here and the temperature starts going up. Well, it's going to go down, but it'll go back up. So it knows your flow and it will heat that water pretty darn hot. It'll get pretty close to that 124 degree temperature. So you can digitally set that. You can also take your flow there and turn that down as well. So this thing is pretty slick. So where are we at? 120, here we go. See how fast that heated up. Um, so that's, I think it might, is it gonna get there? There it is. Reach the high temperature. Over here we got hot water. So I like the digital readout. Think it think it works pretty, pretty well. All right, I stepped outside for just a second because I wanted to show you how slick the inside of this is um, and, and just kind of give you a look at, at the inside of the well, how well it's made, uh, where things are and that kind of thing. So check this out. So here we go. Uh, the door, as I said, this was, you know, an add on that I had to purchase. Uh, but when it is all shut, um, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty well self-contained. I mean, it, it, it looks like it came from the, came from the factory. Um, looks nice. It looks clean. The other thing that I like about this, this is another pro just thinking about it. Previously, the other hot water heater that we had, if it, if the wind would blow and, and we are, out here at the farm um if the wind would blow really bad the wind would get up in in through the the fins and it would blow out the the light the the gas sorry the flame so this does not do that with the pocket on the inside of this door it is this is open here and open here but it does not go straight in the wind cannot go straight in this is exhaust which it's vented out there but there, there you go. Um, the, uh, the fuse and the shutoff there, so if you have to service it, are there. Uh, but it's clean. Um, it works well. And we really, really like the hot water. The instant hot water. All right, so you're probably thinking, man, this guy, you know, he probably had it installed pretty quick. Um, and even while I did, you know, I did it in a day, um, and it wasn't even, you know, I think I started after lunch or something like that. And it wasn't that hard. The hardest thing for, for me was to, to get that 12 volt power. That's what I spent the most time on. So if you can, uh, just get a trouble light, uh, trouble light, meaning something that will test 12 volt power and you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, Napa, whatever, you can get something that it would plug onto a ground, which would be metal, anything mounted to the frame, or even a wire that you believe is 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 grounded. And then the other side, you, you touch it to a wire and there's a little light that comes on. Um, so we tested that and we couldn't find the power. Uh, so that's why I had to take a little bit of extra time and find the power from 12 volt. Um, and once we did that, I mean, I had it all installed like in probably an hour. Everything was in, the plumbing was in, I got my fittings from Lowe's, I knew what I needed, um, and I got all of that in within an hour, but the, the major thing that took some time was the 12 volt power. Um, so if, if you're thinking, man, this is gonna take me all day, no, just do some research, 
maybe this video has helped you, but do some research. Uh, I think you can do it. You don't have to be a master plumber. Um, right on the inside flap of, of the, uh, actually it's on the, the thing that comes on the very top of, of the box when you open the water heater. It says, uh, professional installation is strongly recommended. I'm not a professional, but if you know what you're doing, you shut your propane off. That's number one thing to do before you even start disconnecting any electric, shut the propane off. Um, and I would say even after you shut the propane off, turn your stove on and make sure that all the propane's out of the lines. Then go about disconnecting your electric. If you know where your fuses are, just unhook the one that says, you know, hot water and then you're done or, or water heater and you're done. And then you can go about doing everything safely without worrying about grounding out, blowing fuses and all that kind of stuff, of which I have done before. So the ease of installation is not bad. Don't be scared by it. Um, but I... You know, when it comes right down to it, I would highly recommend this product. We've had it now for, uh, I believe, two weeks. We're, we've been running it for two weeks and have had zero issues other than there's every once in a while we will turn it on and it will beep. We'll turn the hot water on and it will beep. And it's basically throwing a code saying it, it doesn't know what to do and it's just heating water far above you know what it's and, and the code is actually in the book you can look it up in your in your uh, owner's manual and it tells you exactly what that code is and all you, all we do shut the water off count the three and even if you're in the shower it's not that big of a deal count the three turn the water right back on in your business so um but we've had zero issues other than that i i, I won't even call that an issue because it hasn't broken on us it hasn't caused us any you know like i got to take it out and work on or anything like that so so far, so good. So I hope this helps you. I hope uh, if you're in the process of looking, because it's getting ready to be camping season, people are getting ready to be out there and they're gonna use it a lot. Um, this is something that I would highly recommend you doing. You can do it in an afternoon. So uh, try it out, see what you think. Um, you know, if, if you have questions, ask them below. I'd be happy to, uh, to try and answer those for you. Um, yeah, and, and if this video has helped you, there's going to be some other things that we do here on the farm that I'm going to be posting. So this is more like a review more than anything. There's going to be some other things that might be entertaining to you. So uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, love to keep you entertained here in southwestern Ohio here on the farm. And we might do some RV stuff. We might do some, 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 uh, some family stuff. We could do some farming stuff. But yeah, like, subscribe. We'll keep you, keep you updated as what's going on. Um, Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, hit the like and subscribe button. Helps me out, helps you out, keeps everybody happy. All right, happy Sunday. We'll see you.